questions that came up when I was reviewing all these zone districts. Motion picture facility. I don't know if we want to talk about that or it's just not the right time. We did restaurants. I, I, I guess either they're backwards or they should all be the same or do we want them different? That's just a conversation. Yeah, I agree. And then business and professional offices we'll want to talk about. Right now they're only permitted in the Water Street South, which was the blue that hooked around from Ship and Shore around to Culver. And amusement and recreation services. I don't know, that seems kind of strange that they're allowed in Water Street East. I agree. Water Street South. So we'll, we'll get to those and talk about each one. We can have the next slide, please. Uh, Mr. Fox has raised his hand. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Steph. Fox. Cindy, as much for myself, but maybe for others as well, if, could you just briefly recap what the difference between uh, having that use by right and in particular what, when you make it special land unit, special land use, what restrictions or whatever, what processes are imposed? Sure, what's the difference? The difference is by right is you come into my office and you tell me what you want to do. And if it's permitted by right, I just review the setbacks and the height limitations and the use. And I have to give you a permit to do that. If it's a special land use, you have to make applications to the Planning Commission for a special land use review. And there are standards in the ordinance that says it has to be compatible and there's some other standards that it won't be disruptive and so it's an extra layer of review for a special land use by right you just get to do it a special, a special land use requires a public hearing or, or yes. is that it does that's right thank you okay next slide please So we have some current definitions of professional office. And this says um, offer a service that does not include a tangible product. That's pretty vague. Um, I don't know what that is exactly. Everything has a tangible product. If you walk into a lawyer's office, you walk out with a will. You walk into an engineer's office, you walk out with some drawings. So in order to kind of clear that up, I'll show you the proposed changes to that. The personal service establishment includes garment mending, alteration and related minor pressing services, shoe shining, shoe repair, hat cleaning services, watch and clock and other personal services of a, pers of a similar nature not including laundry and dry cleaning plants. So that's, those things are kind of archaic. I cannot imagine that anybody would pay the rent for downtown to do shoe shining or hat cleaning. So I'll show you the proposed um, amendments to that. Next slide, please. So these are the proposed changes. At the very bottom is the crossed out in red is the domestic and business repair services. And that's like vacuum cleaner repair, toaster repair, small appliances. Again, I don't, I can't quite see anybody paying the rent downtown to do vacuum cleaner repair, reupholstering, anything like that. I just can't see it. But if we go back to the business and professional offices, you can see the red line on the top where the crossed out in red is things that are eliminated and underlined in green are the things that are added. And directly below that, you see the cleaned up version without the lines on it. And that would be professional service for a fee, including 
offices for finance, insurance, real estate, legal services, engineering, architectural and planning service, accounting, auditing, and bookkeeping services. Those are things that I consider to be offices and used to be in the zoning ordinance before it was changed, I think in 2014, before I was here. So next slide, please. Peterson, wait, just nope. a would that Would that allow doctor's offices or tattoo parlors or, yeah. Tattoo parlors would come under personal services, like hair salon, spa. Okay. And I think that's on the next slide. Okay, thank you. If you want to go to the next slide, we can look at that. Personal service establishments, the same thing. The red line on the top and then the cleaned up version below. Where it, These are just the definitions. So the um, personal service establishment includes, but not limited to, beauty and barber services, spa services, dance and yoga class, and tattoo parlors. Mm -hmm. The difference between personal services and office services our office people do things for you and personal service establishments they do things to you like cut your hair or give you a tattoo or teach you yoga so would doctors offices be or should doctors offices be included in the personal service establishments they could be i think we should address it somewhere either whether they're allowed or not right I think um, that that they fit better under offices than they do under personal service. So if you could go back one, please. Yeah, because they're professional, I would say. I, I, I agree. Yeah. So including but not limited to, and I tried to put some examples there, but we could certainly add doctors, a medical, like a dentist office. Or, okay, next one. And then the next one. So these are really the questions for consideration. Restaurants, by right or by special land use, does their current ordinance make sense? Should some zone districts be special land use and others be not special, land, just be by right? Um, offices, all zones or which zones? Motion pictures, again, that just seemed kind of odd to be in there. And are there other uses that we're missing? And I put the timing because at the end of the summer, we don't know what our downtown is going to look like. There's going to be businesses that can't make it. And I think that we really, really need to hear from the public and the business owners downtown about what they would like to see. So Stephanie, you can go ahead and open the public hearing. Okay. Kirk, if you wanna to go to the first slide that shows um, the public hearing process. Why I'm not at my house tonight running this movie. I have two dogs that would be the same thing. <laughs> I guess, Stephanie, you can go ahead and open the public okay. hearing. Okay. All right. So uh, we'll start the public portion hearing uh, of our planning commission meeting tonight. We'll call that later. And um, uh, just make sure you identify yourself. Uh, it's on here on your slide, right? Yes. Yeah. Just make sure uh, for our comments, if you want to speak, just identify yourselves, wave your hand or unmute yourself. There's a little uh, icon if you know how to use that, but uh, keep your comments addressed to the chair. And I think they're limited to three. Is that right? Or did we say five, Cindy? Three. Three. Okay. It says five on the screen. Oh, it says five. Yes. Because I copied it from zoning board. Five is fine. Okay. All right. Uh, and we don't have supporting or opposing. These are just general comments, so we don't want to put them out. We can just uh, allow for general comments now. So would anybody like to uh, make a public, public comment? Um, Madam Chair, can I speak up here real quick? This is Kirk. Um, we have two people that are um, present, and one of them is on the phone. So if um, they want to speak, 
the person on the phone has to hit um, star six to unmute themselves. So. Okay. Any, anybody want to uh, comment? Okay. Well, uh, hearing no public comments, then uh, we'll close the public comment portion of our meeting tonight, then. And we'll start commission deliberation. What do you guys think? I know we went over this at uh, the last meeting a little bit. We just started to delve into it, and then we've had this pause, and then all these crazy things happening in the community. So uh, what say you? Should we go by use? Do you want to, should we start with, um, Cindy, you had that list, restaurants. Yeah, that list should also be in your packet. And it's on, they're both current and potential on a single page. The chart, this one, right? Yes. It, yeah, that's the table. Yeah. Right. So if you want to go by use, that's perfectly fine with me. I wonder if restaurants might be the easiest to start. I think so. Yeah, let's go. Let's start with the easy one. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I don't remember how we do this. Um, I wonder if we might want to consider a special land use for restaurants in all four districts. I personally like having a special land use for restaurants because we can talk about trash and lights and hours and uh, live music and things like that. Mm -hmm. And if the Water Street East is supposed to um, promote some residential feel, um, I think it would make sense to not have it be by right. And there are a lot of restaurants in Water Street East already. I don't know that we would disallow future ones, but it might be nice just to have a special land use hearing. That's I, I would agree completely with that. I think that the opportunity for the public to speak on these things, um, uses like the restaurants, because of the reasons Kate just mentioned, mm -hmm. uh, is important. And I think if we don't have that, we're kind of not doing really doing our job because that, things will just get passed through and then they're only going to be, we're only going to hear about them when something goes completely haywire and then you're in a bad position to say, well, it never came before us. So, and then people say, as I said to me, what the hell do we have a planning commission for if you're not helping us plan this stuff? So, anyway, I agree with Kate's. Yeah. I think we saw that with Retro Boats when we approved that uh, for a restaurant. There was a lot of give and take, a lot of, uh, relatively speaking, a, a fair amount of public input on that. And I think it, we were able to craft something that met some of the uh, close neighbors' concerns and still let Retro, uh, you know, uh, have a nice foundation to open their restaurant with and their business. So I agree with that. So you're suggesting maybe all four be by special land use? Is that what you're saying, Kate? That is what I was thinking. Yes. Okay, I you think. Although, I don't know. Well, I don't know. What do you all think of Water Street South? They all four churches. Yeah. I, so I think already has special land use. I don't know why Water Street wouldn't. Right. Yeah, I, I think they should all they should all be special land use. I do have a question. Um, so for the for existing restaurants, so like the butler, um, well no, let me go let me go to Phil's in, in the city center. Um, if if it's if a location is currently a restaurant and they sell um, it can just exchange over to a, a new, like, restaurant owner, and they don't have to go through the planning commission, correct? Correct. The um, special land use is run with the land, not with the person. Didn't we just see that with Pumpernickels just about a couple years ago? Didn't that sell, and, and they didn't have to come before us? That's correct. So this this would only apply for let, let's say like on Water Street East, if you know one of the current residents wanted to turn it into a restaurant, right. and they would have to go through the spe uh, special land use process if we made this change. Correct. Yeah, also a couple of retail places on Water Street East. Right, okay. Yeah, that whole strip between Wicks Park and uh, the, 
good goods really is retail, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's retail smattered all in there. So. Did the mitten go by special land use? I don't recall. Originally it did, when it was borrowed time. Uh, okay, yeah, that's right. That's right. Chris? Uh, this is just for my own personal information. The, I see the restaurants, but then brewery, distillery, and winery are not permitted at all in three of those. Is there a, <clears throat> because the breweries like the mitten, um, uh, is there a reason we don't want them in those, that group to be uh, uh, special land use too? The mitten is not actually a brewery. They uh, brew off site, but okay. breweries and wineries can have a lot of odor. So I think that's probably why they're not permitted. Okay, is that a brewery right across the street then? Um, uh, New Holland? New yeah. Holland, they don't brew on site either. I meant in the mall where Mermaid is, there, is there a brewery there? There's Copper Craft Distillery, but they also brew off site. Okay. Thank you. I'm good with that, special land use all the way through. Yeah, I am too. This is Marsha. Yeah. Uh, Mike, do you do you have anything you want to add? I know you're on the phone. It's a little bit difficult for you. What do you, do you have any thoughts? I, I think I would agree with what you've all said regarding making it special land use. I think that's good protection. Okay. All right. Is there some reason we should, Sydney, can you think of anything that might uh, be a detriment if we switch the two that are by right to uh, special land use? No, um, I think that's probably a good choice. The only one that I would consider making by right would be the city central, or the C1, the red zone, because that is for the most intense business purposes but having them all by special land use is just fine. Okay. What, uh, so we, we, we've kind of tackled the, uh, the restaurant, the, what we called the easy, the easy line item. <laughs> Why don't we delve into some of the uh, other ones? Um, what uh, motion picture facility, um, thoughts? I, I tend to agree with what I think Cindy said earlier, which is, it seems odd that that's allowed, period. What if someone wanted to open like a 12 seat, <laughs> I don't know, you know, boutique theater, which is kind of a thing. I don't think any, anyone would open something that would actually fit in Saga Tuck, but I mean, is there harm to having a, a place like that? That's a very good question, and I don't think there is a harm to it. It just seems kind of odd. Um, motion picture theaters are closing in Michigan. Everywhere. Everywhere. Well, they just opened one in Holland on 8th Street. You know, they're doing That's those true. smaller theaters. Yeah, I was going to say so a lot of times, so that's that's the entryway for things to pop up again you know and right. yeah, and they and they change form like i mean kate like you mentioned they're smaller they could be you know rather than you know 200 300 seat theaters you have these you know 10 20 30 you know right. smaller ones and Kind of make you know l little events out of it and watching a movie and that kind of stuff so Have a drink, yeah as long as that's a special land use i guess there's no harm i mean it's most of the ones the one in holland being a good example because motion picture facilities in general are not good business models anymore if they add in liquor food beer wine and anything else they can think of to move to get revenue so on that basis, you for sure want it to be a special land use at minimum, given the likelihood that it would not be just a, a motion picture facility in the way we traditionally thought of. Right. 
Right. And do we want to add maybe then theater? Yeah. Yeah. If you like to change that the yeah. SCA yeah. has, they do a lot of films. And that might be something, right. you know, especially yeah. for those of us that remember, um, uh, what was that, the picture thing that used to come? Uh, the Water film 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 festival. Yeah, used to, the films used to come and they would rotate the films around to different places. Yeah, the film festival. Film festival, thank you. I mean, I, I don't see why we should take it off. You never know. There are a few places. Hey, if Coral Gables ever sells, that's a big enough spot. You could do something neat in if you, you know, if you get right. it. I mean, there are some places where it would be feasible and it would bring people to town. It, it complements the other types of recreation and entertainment that we also are trying to cultivate in the city. So I, I would be amenable to leaving it on there. Well, to the earlier point though, does it make sense to use the term theater rather than, I mean, motion pictures are a very specific thing. Theater uh -huh. includes motion pictures, That's true. theaters. It could also oh. include another, you know, a second SCA for example, or whatever. Yep. Like right. small. Yeah, there could be, uh, I mean, there could be a stage. I mean, I know when, when we lived in Lansing, I know there, there was a, in Old Town, there was a spot and they would have um, poetry readings and they had, it was a small, there was a, it was a small venue and they had a small stage. And so, I mean, it could be, you know, indie films and, you know, poetry. Um, you know, kind of, you know, so that sort of live entertainment mm -hmm. for smaller groups. Music. Yep, music. Yep, yeah. Open mic or karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, the theater may, makes sense. Yeah. I don't know if any of you have been to Seven Steps Up in Grand Haven. Right, yep, I've been there. Not a big facility, and they apparently are able to run it live entertainment, you know, there's, there's bar or whatever as well, but mm -hmm. not a lot of seats. Well, who knows what COVID will do to it, but at the beginning, there's not a ton of seats there. It could literally be done on, you know, a, a fourth or a fifth of floor space that Coral Gables has, so. Yeah. The other thing that comes to my mind is like the Park Theater in Holland. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. That is rather large though, compared to anything we've gotten Sagatuck, except maybe Coral Gables. Yeah. yeah, but it's a small version. Yeah, but it, it's a boutique theater, and so there people yeah. attend it. You know. Yeah, I like to change the theater and take away that motion picture. Do we want to take the not permitted out then and make it all special land use? I don't see why I would, not. I would, I would suggest that. Okay. Yeah, my my only comment. I mean, Water Street North. When I when I read general description for that zone it, it says promote to promote high intensity commercial uses that complement waterfront setting um it seems like the flavor of water street north is more commercial oriented but yeah it does have that block of uh those though they're uh, right. I mean I'm not like adamantly opposed <laughs> to, yeah, no. to having a special land use for it that but that would be like the star and the deli and mm -hmm. uh, Jim Dewey's place yes so the star could maybe be a movie theater sometime <laughs> let's hope I mean, not as long as you like sitting on a wet seat yeah <laughs> Okay, so we have motion pictures we talked about to, to change it to be motion picture facility and theaters. Or just theaters. Just theaters. The theater implies both yeah. picture showing and something live. Potentially. Got it. Yeah. All right. Uh, and I think, Cindy, I think maybe I'm wrong about this, but I think part of, part of the effort here is or at least one part of the effort here is to have these limitations or whatever seem less threatening to people who may be wanting to bring 
hundreds of thousands of dollars to Saga Tech to refresh a facility and change it into something else or open a restaurant or whatever. So the less, the fewer number of, you can do it here, but you can't do it here. And you can't, you know, this kind of stuff puts people off and causes people to go, wait a minute, they really don't want this stuff. So where possible, you know, the easier it looks, I think is sort of the better for the city. So are we leaning towards all four uh, sectors being special yeah. land use then? That's fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with it. Okay. All right. All right, so we've done restaurants, we've done motion picture facility. How about home occupation? We we're looking at that Water Street East and talking about moving it from not permitted to uh, by right. What are your thoughts? Well, for what it's worth, there again, home occupations is, is open enough of a category that can include things that any one of us might or might not want our neighbors to be engaged in. They're uh, pretty limited under their the regulations for home occupations and home businesses. Well, in any case, I, I don't I don't see where the hurt is to require a special land use for that. Simply well, if they're allowed in residential zone districts without a special land use. Yeah. That's right. We did one of those uh, about a year ago up near uh, in those little condo things that were up near Blue Star Highway on Lake. Anybody else? What do you think about that? I mean, going back to Cindy's original comment, like if, if you read the general Water Street East, which is uh, not permitted right now, the only one, um, and it does say <laughs> preserving the residential flavor so that, yeah, that is kind of odd that yeah. the one that does emphasize residents, <laughs> it's not permitted, the home occupations, so. I agree. And yet it says commercial development is not desired in this district. Is that, yeah. oh, I'm looking at Water Street East, right? Or no, North, I'm sorry, I'm in the wrong East, East. East. We are in East, we're in the green district, yeah. Uh, yeah, so. But East does have homes, and I don't know why those people shouldn't be permitted to engage in home occupations like all the rest of us are. Yeah. I think that's probably a mistake. Yeah. <clears throat> I think so too. I think this used to be one, just one big commercial zone district and it got divided up yeah. because of the wanting to promote access to the water. And I'm not sure why they wanted to preserve the residential flavor, but there are quite a few homes there. Yeah, but I think between Hoffman and Mason, there's the Wilcox house and that home that's been being renovated for a hundred years and yeah. Mm -hmm. And home occupations are things that are like, um, maybe you work from your home as an accountant and right. people right. email you stuff and you work on it and then you email it back to them. They're not necessarily occupations that have people coming to your house, like a beauty salon or something like that. Right. Okay, are we good on that one? All right, so now we're going to move up a little bit and we're going to talk to talk about the personal service establishment. It's permitted by right, potentially. And personal yeah. service establishments are the ones that we kind of divided out from professional offices by being the things that somebody does something to you, like cuts your hair, gives you a tattoo, teaches you yoga. And right now they're permitted by right in all of those zones. Which is interesting to me because I'm trying to think of how many personal service establishments we have in any of that, those zones. All I can think of is the tattoo place, if that's even still there. It's so not still that, there, but there is a hair salon yeah. Yeah, on Water Street. And, and there are some spas. Yeah, yeah, um, okay. Yeah, the, is Bella Vita still there? Yeah, yeah. Pink, I, right by Pink Patio, there's a new spa. And then yeah. between um, 
between Holland Brewing and uh, Tree of Life, there's yeah. a spa in there too. Mm -hmm. I guess I'm just thinking, I don't know if we want like a dance studio that is closed on the weekends, you know? But I don't know that they would pay the rent either, right? They probably couldn't make any money if they weren't open on the weekends. Right. But I mean, yeah. if they, you know, if they served local people, I don't know. Yeah. But I guess they have yoga too. Okay, never mind. There is a yoga studio down by the hardware store. That's what I just remember. Right. Yes, mm -hmm. there is. Uh, does anybody have an appetite to change personal service establish from establishments from by right to special land use? Are we okay with the new potential definition remaining by right in all four? I'm good with it. Me too. Okay. No objection then for now? Nope. Just nope. the start of a discussion. So Mike, how about you? No objection. Okay. All right. I have... Oh. I have a comment. Um, I think in the, yeah, in this old version that you're, that Kirk's showing here on the screen, mm -hmm. it does specify because it's by right, personal services do not include laundry and dry cleaning. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering, I mean, it's, it seems kind of odd to put that in there, but on the other hand, if, you know, they do produce you know, chemicals and stuff like that. So, I mean, I'm just wondering. Those don't seem like personal service establishments, a dry cleaning plant? Or do they mean an actual dry cleaner? Well, I'm thinking they that's just, they mean a place that does that, where they actually do the dry cleaning at that location. Right. That was what I thought you were reading to. Well, I mean, if we think it needs to be in there in order to keep them out, Cindy, I take it you didn't think that was necessary? I don't think um, laundry and dry cleaning plants are personal service establishments because they're not doing something to you. They're doing something for you. So, okay. Yeah, I would agree. I, don't, I wouldn't think of laundry if I saw beauty and barber services. I mean, seems like a stretch. Do we need to make that definition somewhere that it's it, it's so it's not somebody walking in and getting a garment mended or any of those things that it's some, some you go in and they do something to you you don't leave with anything we well, might leave with hairspray or something like that but it's it's they're doing something to you as opposed to for you yeah um i did put in the revised definition of personal service establishment I can find it. Oh, I got it. I got it. Um, a, kind of a list that says included, including but not limited to. So if it's something similar, like maybe somebody's going to do, um, oh, I can't think of anything right now that people do to, well, maybe like a dog grooming. That, that'd be okay, yeah. wouldn't it? We already have those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I can add that to the definition to say including but limited to beauty salon, hair color, barbers, tattoos, and dog grooming. Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, are we saying keep those all by right then? It's okay with me. Yeah, I can't tell if it's a slippery slope or not. <laughs> well, they've been allowed. That's the thing. I mean, they've, they've always been allowed in all four of those districts. So I guess I'm feeling like we haven't had any trouble yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, the reason that it's blue on your chart is because of the change to the definition. Okay. Okay. Um, is everybody okay with the tattoo parlor being? Uh, without being any uh, carve off or needing special consideration? Uh, is it still fit with everything else as just being by right? Again, we've had, I mean, I don't know if they're still there, but there was that tattoo place next to Wally's for years. Yeah, it's, go it's gone now, but yeah, it was there and nobody, I never got any complaints about it. 
they would have to meet the health codes and everything else. Mm -hmm. Plus signage and everything in the part of, of being part of the HDC. So, yep. yeah. Um, should we include there that medical is not included? Just to kind of, I mean, I, would anyone think, is this where a doctor's office would go? Should we just say, you know, medical offices are covered under business professional or is it enough just to have them covered there? Well, what, what, what would you do like if they wanted a Weight Watchers or uh, acupuncturist? Where would they, either of those go? I think acupuncture would clearly fall under things that people do to you. Mm -hmm. Um, Weight Watchers, I'm not sure. That might fall under clubs. Yeah, that wouldn't seem like more of a club. And that's, those are allowed in another couple different zone districts that are not commercial. But dentists do things to you, whether you want them to or not. Um, <laughs> yeah, they do. But they're professionals. I mean, they're, they're credentialed professionals. Okay. Is so that that's, what we're, that's what we're saying is the difference. I, that was my thought. Did anybody okay. want to add to that? I just do we should we mention in the personal that you know they're not covered here they're covered by business Cindy what do you think or is it that okay? makes sense that makes sense just direct them to yeah would uh, uh, like a chiropractic services be under business business professional I would think chiropractic I think so because that's licensed again that's medical school that's professional certification that kind of thing I don't know. But um, I mean, I I think some chiropractors do acupuncture, but I mean, as long as they're a professional, right? That's what drives them to a business in the business professional office. Yeah, it's under okay. that professional umbrella already. Yeah. Perfect. Anything else to add on that one? The business professional. No. Okay. Have we covered the ones you wanted us to? Can I maybe go back to that uh, chart that said uh, things to consider? We kind of Business and professional office is the one that started this discussion. So probably we should look at. That's the tricky one. Yeah. Oh, I don't think so. I think they should all just be not permitted. Well, I do too, but I don't know if everyone agrees with us, Chris. <laughs> we got two. We got two. <laughs> that was so far so good. Um, one concern I've heard from a business owner who probably has already talked to Cindy, uh, and I'm not sure if this holds water, but his concern was some realtors and other office type folks would be able to afford higher rents. So if uh, building owners start charging four thousand dollars a month, and a wealthy real estate practice says, "Yeah, I can afford that for you know a spot on Butler." Um, regular merchants, retail folks, won't be able to afford the runs. I'm just talking feedback. I don't think I had heard that one before. Yeah, and there was concern because the place that you know the realtor is going in was a very wealthy, high-end um, property management place. How, how half pregnant are we with real estate offices and insurance offices, you know, already in the overall district? I don't think there are any, are they? Just the real estate, right, Cindy? Just real estate, yeah. That's, that's the only one I'm aware of. We did have another real estate. Well, we have Mill Pond. Exactly. Yeah, and Mill Pond. Have... Isn't there one, uh, I can never remember the street names in this town um up from morrow's kind of across the street sort of from. there was there was a, a shop there that had sold home goods like pillows and some kind of furniture and wasn't really that was just kind of a front for the real estate office and it was closed all the time right. yeah, I'm, because there were real estate listings in the window Yep. And I think that that's gone. But right now, the way our definitions are, real estate offices and other offices are allowed in um, as personal service establishments. And that's why we want to clear up those two definitions and separate them, take 
real estate offices out of that definition and just make them um, business and professional offices. Just to clear it up that, because when I looked up the, the definitions uh, in the IRS code, as well as what's been approved in the past, they've been considered um, personal service establishments. I, get, I understand completely the motivation, and I sort of think I share it, that they, those sorts of businesses don't contribute, in fact, detract just for no other reason than they take up space from the kinds of retail things we like to think of that are part of the charm of the, of the city. That's so, right. I, I agree. So I, I get that, but again, do we end up with an issue or a potential issue down the road, given that Mill Pond is already in place? They would be then non-conforming. And that would mean if they sold, that non-conforming wouldn't go to the next owner. The, non the non-conforming runs with the land, not with the owner. Okay. So they could, they could stay there, but um, they couldn't make it bigger or they couldn't, um, if, if it was abandoned and if they turned it into a retail site, they couldn't turn it back to real estate. Which I think would be fine. Another question, is it possible, I, is it possible to quote, restrict them to other than the first floor, other than the street level? You mean to like allow for offices on second and third floors? Yeah. Yeah. There's no reason that you couldn't do that. Um, the challenge would be then meeting the building code because you have to have an elevator and barrier free because it would be a change of use. So I, I would be all for that. And, you know, then I don't know, somewhere down the line, if someone built a new building downtown for whatever reason. Or again, <laughs> I'm, thinking of the, I'm thinking of a deep pockets person who comes to town you know, and, and somehow participates with Kilwins, you know, which has basically empty space or, or, or right. bunk, bunk space above it, and, and decides to sink a lot of money into that to have those be, you know, professional services, puts in an elevator, the whole thing, you know, costs a million dollars or whatever it costs, but why not? Is it, you know, you could make an argument that that's better for downtown than empty space up there or, or just apartments, which is, I think would be a good idea. Yeah. At least to offer it. Yeah, it would be great if it happened. It would be like downtown Holland, and then you've got more year-round, yeah. you know, yeah. busyness downtown. But um, yeah, it probably wouldn't happen. But I'm fine with allowing it. So we want to allow for business and professional offices on second and third floor only. Yes. By right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know what you're going to, what kind of standards you would have for a special land use. Right. For an office. I agree. So we've, we've basically compromised from what it sounds like we've hashed out. We want to make a place for them downtown. We just have reservations about them taking up prime real estate on the first floor, which is our foot traffic and our shopping and our people that, you know, spend dollars as they're coming here to for recreation. So yeah, it doesn't seem like a half bad compromise, really. I agree, Chris. Yeah. Mike, what do you think? You're not on my screen. Well, so I, it's think, hard I, I think by doing this, you're making you're making the real estate more valuable. If you allow that. Hmm. And I don't think that's a bad idea. Well, that was easy. <laughs> well, and I think what I like about it too is we've opened up the potential of what goes on those second uh, floors. Right now, I think most people just think of rentals, right? Uh, apartments. Uh -huh. And this is kind of helping everyone think uh, more broadly about the best ways to possibly use those upper floors. So I think that's a good thing too. Uh -huh. so, all right. Uh, any other discussion we need to have, Cindy, around that item? I think that's good. Okay. 
The only other thing that I would caution is we don't know exactly how downtown is going to look at the end of the summer. Right. And I'm not, I don't want to put any pressure on you to think you have to make a decision now or even next month. And maybe you want to take some time to see what happens over the next six months or so. Mm -hmm. But I could take this back if you were to table the, table the proposed amendments. I could take this back, make all these changes that, that we've talked about and present it to you again, either next month or later. But if it's later, do we have five real estate go op offices going this summer where there are empty storefronts now? Yeah, see, I think right with the good time right now because okay. the only one grandfathered would be um, Mill Pond. And the one, the new one. Yeah, I, was, see, I, don't, I still don't think real estate offices are allowed under our current ordinance, but if they are, or if that's your interpretation, then I feel like we need to fix that. Question. Okay. Why don't you let me take this back, make all the um, adjustments that we talked about, and we'll um, do it again at next month's meeting. Sounds good. Did, yeah, just one. Did we did we touch on the amusement and recreation services? No, I just was a little bit confused about what that was supposed to be for. Um, I think it was originally put in as a special land use because Coral Gables had yeah. that climbing wall. Yeah. And I don't know if you want to keep it, if you want to talk about it. I just kind of highlighted it as something that seems a little odd. I would say so the arcade. There, I know there was an arcade in years past, and now there is one as well, right? In front of Baldy's Meat. Is that right? In front of there what? A little arcade where you could play pinball. That's different. Oh, I figured it just fit into that amusement and recreation, does it not? No, no it's different. about three lines up. Oh, there's a whole arcade line. I didn't even see that. Thank you. So, I could see the arcade being permitted. Yeah. I'm not sure why it's not, but I don't, I think we should take out amusement and recreation for Water Street East. Well, so I'm confused. Wait a minute. Back up a minute. If, if it's not permitted anywhere, why is there one <laughs> in that front, front piece of uh, the Mermaid building? Is it not still there? There were pinball machines in there. I, I looked at it. I, I didn't know about it. <laughs> am, I, am I, did I hallucinate it? Because I thought this is- The wild west of the uh, mermaid building. Yeah, no, it's, it's, the, it's at the north end in front of the Baldy's meet. Huh. There were some pinball machines in there at one time. Okay. Uh, maybe last summer? Well, no matter, I, I mean- Were there four? It, I don't think it's standalone, you know, I don't think it's its own business. It might just be- yeah part of another business for, you know, places to, for the kids to play while the main business is going on. So, I, think. I guess. Okay. Do we object to an arcade? Amusement arcade? It's a place that uh, contains four or more coin operated amusement devices. Yeah, and why were they never permitted? I guess that'd be a great question. What do you think? Yeah, that's That goes back to the 80s when there were, <laughs> when there were like, um, Hooligans? Arcades in the malls that had uh, dinging and ringing and kids running around and, you know, drop your kid off at the mall and give them some quarters and, and no, there was some fear about them being We all of, did that. We all did that. <laughs> and now you've got an arcade on your telephone or on your cell phone anyway. Right, so. right. <laughs> That's funny. I don't really see the harm in one of those, but. Yeah, I don't know. Do we do that special land use? Could we do a little research on it maybe, Cindy? Yeah, we'll I can do that. that. The next round, I mean, we don't have to tackle everything right now. I think the big piece was the real estate mm -hmm. offices uh, or the other, is that the only one really that you guys were the most concerned about or should we do it all? The, uh, the amusement and recreation services is, is, what did that include that's not permitted? That is like um, rides, games, like um, Coral Gables climbing wall. That's what that was under. Okay. Yeah. Bungee jumping. Yep. Yeah. So I feel like that should be removed 
uh, from Water Street East. That should not yeah. be promoted. Are we all? That's that green area, which is not conducive to that. No. With all the houses. <laughs> Can I go back to something Kate mentioned earlier? If we don't make the change sort of official related to the real estate offices not being on first floor, do we run the risk, even, even waiting a month for this, do we run the risk of three or four of them jumping in and renting those properties now? It's a possibility. And if you wanted to make a motion tonight to take action on that specific item, I don't have a problem with that. Oh. And just table the rest till next month when I can get these changes in there, get them kind of organized for you. I mean, this is, you know, this knows too well, but I mean, like the, the house on Water Street, you know, when you, you create a situation where somebody stands to get something in there before the door slams shut on them yep. and, and, and lock out other competitors, potentially, you know, in just a month, you've really created an incentive. Okay. I think in order to do that, the motion should include the changes to the definitions. And I will add, as amended by you, to include medical and dental and acupuncture and chiropractic under the professional offices and not personal services. Does this have to go to city council? Yes. Okay. It's too late to get it on Monday night. Yes. Tuesday. Is it too late? Why? Yeah, a motion, an, an action motion has to be in the Wednesday before the... Uh, okay. And it has to go in as first reading and second reading. Yeah. So probably doing that tonight would be a, a really appropriate. Yep. So it can go in as a first reading or not at all on Monday? Okay. No, it can't. Well, check with Kirk if he's still alive there. He might be away from screen. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm uh, here alive and well and intrigued with these very interesting discussions. <laughs> <laughs> Not nearly as great as your budget. Yes. He's on his third beer. <laughs> as I said, I, I'm with the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> You're in good hands. So what, what was the question, Cindy? The question was if um, the Planning Commission makes uh, a recommendation to City Council to adopt a proposed ordinance amendment, is it too late to get it on the agenda for first reading on Tuesday? Well, if we follow the rules of procedure, which I think we better, um, it's supposed to be in the Wednesday prior. And we just had okay. a council meeting and I went over it. So um, I, think oh, it better, yeah, I think we better stick with the rules just because if we don't, we're going to, it opens the door to other issues, but. That's fine. Thank yep. you. Thank you. All right. So do we need to do this tonight? Then to get it on the next agenda, yes, we do need to do it tonight. Okay, so can you kind of help us all with the way the motion might sound since we're going to have to go by memory? I think the motion will sound like to um, amend the definitions of personal service establishment and business professional and business offices as submitted with the, with the addition of medical type items added to the professional business offices and to um, change the ordinance sections that allow for, that prohibit professional offices in the commercial zone districts to say, instead of saying prohibited, saying that they're permitted by right on second and third floors. So moved. <laughs> I really do it. <laughs> Is that allowed, Cindy? I couldn't have said it myself. I couldn't have said it better myself, or couldn't have said it myself. My hand got cramped at the toward the end of writing. <laughs> well, it is recorded, and we can look at it again in the morning and make the adjustments.
Does that yeah. pass yeah. for a second? Do, can we get a second on that or do we need second. a second? <laughs> oh, sorry, Mike. Second. Right. We have a second. So motion by Fox, supported by Van Meter. Yeah, and this is Marcia. Yeah, so just to clarify, on your uh, matrix there, the potential for mm -hmm. business and professional offices, what was just proposed is that it's they're all by right on second and third floors, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay, so do you need anything else, Cindy? Have we have we gotten that? Nope, I just have to find my roll call sheet. Oh, okay. <laughs> Which somehow got lost under all these other papers. So is there a table, uh, is there an, a portion of this that we've tabled until next time, or did we really, we did, didn't we? We're going to table some of this or not? Yeah. Yeah, well, that would be a separate motion. Right, okay. Are we ready for a roll call or do you have more discussion? I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, uh, Van Meter. Yes. McPollin. Yes. Casper. Yes. Peterson. Not voting. No, oh, that's right. Um, Fox. Yes. Blasity. Yes. Motion carries and I will prepare the recommendation with the changes as requested. Okay. And should I make a motion to table the, the remaining discussion? Yeah. So moved. Second. I second. Yep. And we'll do another roll call. Fox? Yes. Um, Peterson? Yes. Uh, Casper? Yes. McPollin? Yes. Van Meter? Yes. Blasity? Yes. Motion carries. Okay. Good job, everybody. Yes. <laughs> well. All right. So are we on to new business then, Cindy? New business. New business. Okay. So the only new business item here is uh, an appointment to the tree board. No, we'll get to that. All right. So uh, apparently, the tree board is supposed to have uh, somebody from the planning commission be represented on it. And it, the language is that it states either the chair or if anyone in the group has a particular interest and would like to be appointed, we could do that too. So, I'm I, on what? I'm on it. You're on it. Okay. I'm on the tree board. So we don't have to do it. Does that cover? <laughs> Does that count, Cindy, since she's a, a council rep? No, we have to have um, somebody from the Planning Commission. You can't wear two hats at the tree board. I'll give it up. <laughs> <laughs> and you got to find a I council. Think, I think we need a council person. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I wanted to throw it out there to anybody. If any of you are interested in uh, serving on that tree board, I would gladly uh, give that spot to you. Otherwise, I will. Uh, fulfill that role as it states in the charter that I think we should give it to Richard as a prize for <laughs> being here. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Uh, you probably shouldn't do that, right, Cindy? Well, probably not. <laughs> but you could ask him, Stephanie, if you don't want to do it, you could ask him, I suppose. Okay. Sure. So the, I take it that no one here has an interest in being on that tree board. Okay. All right. To get off so, in three years. Sorry, was, did someone say something? <laughs> Chris? You won't admit it, but she did. <laughs> okay, so Cindy, should I make it available to him? Do we need to make this a formal right now where that wouldn't be possible? Or do you think No, it, it's, it's either the chair or her designee. Okay. So you, sh you can definitely make it available to him. And if he's interested, you could appoint him your designee and then he could attend the next tree board meeting or it would be you. Okay. Um, it'll be, I'll just, I'll go ahead and do it. I doubt that Rich is going to want to do that. I mean, yeah. yeah. But if he comes to me and says, I really wish I could have had that spot, <laughs> am I able to give it over? Yes. All right. We're good. Okay. You can put me on there. That's fine. Okay. 
All right, and so uh, that's all of the new business. I guess we'll move on to communications now. My computer's sliding off its little spot here. No communication, or we do? We don't have any written communications. Okay, uh, no report of officers. All right, so I, that brings us to the public comment section for any item. Uh, does anyone uh, in, the, in the audience want to make some public comments? Okay, have uh, no comments. So we will uh, move to adjourn, I guess. Is that right? Is that what mm -hmm. I look to see on the, okay. Yeah, okay. I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. Second. Okay, we'll do a roll call. Casper. Yes. Fox. Yes. McPollin. Yes. Peterson. Yes. Van Meter. Yes. Vlasity. Yes. The motion carries. All right. We are adjourned. Bye, everybody. Thank you.